Hello everyone. Thank you for your interest in Manu Partnership Program. In the series of videos, we will guide you through the process of creating a game with Menu, so you can make the game of your own and earn money from your creations. Today, we will create a side-scrolling game using mostly prefabs from the marketplace. We begin by creating a new game from the side-scrolling game template, and we type a project name. We delete the default character, and we are going to use the side-scrolling game custom character from the marketplace. To import it, we click on the asset browser icon and import the prefab. Every prefab link will be down in the description. We place the new character in the scene and click on Detach Prefab. In the Characters Variables tab, we bind the character to our game manager and we create two number variables. One is called Battery, which will represent our character's energy level with a default value of 100, and one is for counting the gears that the player will collect. The next step is to connect the camera to our new character. Inside the camera's variables, we set the camera target variable to the box located inside the character's camera target folder. We test the new character in the game mode. Inside the main character in animation for states, we will set the character to lose a little bit of energy each time it gets hurt. In Hurt Animation, we add the main character in the timeline and add a keyframe for the battery variable. We set the value to battery variable minus 5. In the Triggers tab, we notice that the animation is set to run by default when the character starts colliding with anything that has the tag Damager. Inside the trigger tab of the death animation, we add a comparison trigger to start the animation when the character's battery variable becomes equal to or less than zero. We also want our character to lose a small amount of battery when the player double jumps. Like we did before, we add a keyframe for the battery and we set the value to battery variable minus five. In the asset browser, we import the spikes trap prefab and place it in the scene. You will notice that this prefab is already set to contain the damager tag we showed before. We detach the prefab which is recommended when we want to preserve the original and we move the trap to a different position. If you select the damage collider, you will notice the damager tag is predefined. To continue, we need to import a collection of sci-fi assets prefab. This prefab contains various platforms and models that are useful for space and sci-fi games. We click on the Spikes model from this collection and drag it inside the Meshes folder of the Spikes trap. You can delete the old Spike Meshes. We also set the position to zero in all three axes to center it. Like this, you can convert the spikes trap to any model you like while preserving the functionality. Some adjustments might be needed so the damage collider matches the new mesh shape. We make these changes from the collider tab on the top gizmo.
In the gameplay, we can see the character takes some damage when stepping on the spikes and loses some battery on the double jump. But we cannot see this yet. We need a way to see these changes. We import the menu prefab and place it in the scene. This is a pre-made prefab containing a working user interface with various features that we will use as a base for our game. For this prefab to work, it needs to be under the camera group. So we click and drag in under the camera and set the position and rotation to all axes to zero. We don't need the timer UI for this game, so we can delete it. In the background folder, we delete the stone mesh and we add a plane primitive. We set the rotation on the x-axis to 90 degrees and we create a new glow material. This plane will show the energy level of the battery. The texture that we will be using is half white and half gray. You can apply any color you like on the top of it. All assets will be provided for you in the description. We set the rotation on the Z axis to 90 degrees and we change the value of the texture vertical tiling to 0.5. By doing this, we only show half of the texture. We also scale down the plane to the x-axis to 25% to make it look more like a bar. You can also change the font of the digits inside the collectibles UI folder. We use a different texture with a set of numbers. You can also customize the appearance to your liking. In the Variables tab of the Main Menu Prefab folder, we can see all the available customizations for the user interface, like horizontal and vertical alignment, scaling, etc. For the horizontal alignment, setting the value to zero will align the user interface horizontally at the center of the screen, and setting it to minus one will align it to the left. You can decorate the user interface with anything you like. In this game, we copy the battery model and paste it inside the background folder of the menu prefab user interface. You can customize the position and rotation of it
In this prefab, there are some predefined animations inside the animations internal folder of the collectibles UI group. We don't need the count collectibles animation for this game, so we can disable it, but we are going to make changes to the display collectibles animation. Inside the display collectibles animation, there is a local variable called raw. Anything we place in this variable will be displayed in the user interface. We change the value to the battery variable. We import the energy bar in the timeline and we add a vertical offset keyframe. This will convert the battery level to a visual texture offset to represent the battery level similar to a classic health bar. We type the function, parentheses battery variable, multiply 0.5, divide 100, parentheses plus 0.5. Now in the game, we can see the changes in the battery level each time our character is getting hurt or double jumps, but the character cannot respawn when the battery level drops to zero and the character dies. To fix this, we import the checkpoint prefab. This prefab contains ready functionality for the checkpoint system. To expand the system, you can just duplicate any of the checkpoints and populate your level. Inside the checkpoints group, we will make changes to the respawn animation. We retarget the current asset inside the timeline to the main character. We also insert the respawn animation of the main character. For the main character, we also add the controlled variable and we set the variable to off at the beginning of the animation and set it to on at the end. This will prevent the player from controlling the character while the respawn animation is playing. In the triggers tab, we set this animation to start after the death animation has ended. If you want to add an extra effect and make the character appear like falling from the top on respawn, Add two units on the position Y of the main character. Add another keyframe of the active checkpoint's global position on the Y axis. In the main character, make sure you also add the battery variable and reset the value back to 100. To prevent other animations for states to play while Respawn is playing, we add a Not Continuously Animation Playing trigger with the Respawn animation inside in every animation for states animation. To speed the development, we can just copy and paste this trigger. Now when the character dies, it automatically respawns to the last activated checkpoint and the battery is set back to 100. In the next episode, we're going to add some collectibles and build a starting screen.